what what's going on awesome people uh welcome to another episode of awesome people instagram live my name is iman hushman and it's a pleasure to have you a part of tonight's live hope you're enjoying the tuesday evening so far tuesday june 27th you know what that means that means that in only like what five days wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday monday oh thank god okay in six days instead of five days um it's a little event called the Azadi Festival, July 3rd, happening in Ship Garden, at Ship Garden in Tyson's, uh, in the D.C. area. And if you can't make it in the D.C. area, have no fear, ladies and gentlemen. We have a special program lined up for you virtually that you can enjoy the program that's starting at 1.11 p.m. and goes all the way to 1.11 a.m., 12 hours of unity through culture, the best that Iran and its history and its culture could possibly offer from the food to the music to the drinks to the poetry to uh the camaraderie to the love to the what am i missing poetry did i say that already uh i don't know but i know that it's gonna be an amazing event for all ages family friendly uh of course there's gonna be a lot of activism we're gonna have some of um the most gold-hearted patriotic freedom loving iran loving um, humans on the planet who've been fighting consistently for a free Iran for the last 10 months going strong. Truly, we have uh, about 50 ambassadors from around the world that have put their name and their, their heart into this program to make sure that it's truly a unifying event that also uh, is a great amplification of the voices of our fellow Iranians fighting for freedom. Uh, if you haven't heard about Azadi Festival after a live, please uh, click on the link in the bio, get some more information, go to azadi-festival.com. Um, now, what is this awesome people Instagram live in case you're tuning in? I've been doing as many IG lives with uh, these ambassadors and performers and sponsors and vendors of the Azadi Festival. Why? Well, because it's important to put a spotlight on the people that are putting a spotlight on this revolution. It's important to put a spotlight on the people that are doing whatever they can to preserve the Iranian culture. It's important to put a spotlight on people that give a damn about community, that give a damn about unity. Uh, it's uh, important to put a spotlight on um, non-Iranians that care about what's happening in Iran. Um, it's important to put a spotlight on people who care about bridging a gap between uh, two groups of people, whatever it may be. Uh, it's all about uh, love. That's what Azadi Festival is really all about. Really at its core, it's about love and it's about culture and um, a lot of great things that you would want to see in your utopia-like community. You know, like just kind of close your eyes and be like, what type of community would I like to be around with? What kind of community do I want to uh, inspire me to become the better version of myself? What kind of people do I want to be surrounded with where... Uh, they will support me and they will reach down and they will lift me up instead of uh, criticize, instead of judge, instead of pushing down. So that's the kind of community that we build at Unite and Conquer. And I'm so grateful for those of you who've already uh, been a part of it, uh, whether you joined a few years ago or whether you just joined today. Grateful for you. And we're literally building uh, the most um, ideal community around us. So uh, today, or tonight actually, the guest that I'm going to be uh, introducing is a longtime friend of mine. He is one of the ambassadors of Ozzy Festival, and he's also uh, an incredible singer uh, who's going to be blessing the Ozzy Festival stage uh, on July 3rd. His name is Ali Zepideh, and if Ali John could please press that plus sign, then I can bring you in. So in the meantime, while he's doing that, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background about him. Ali is an accomplished auditor at the Defense Contract Audit Agency, DCAA. Born in Miami, which is where I'm at right now, so he was born right here. He later uh, found his cultural roots in Tehran, where he spent his formative years. Not too many Iranians were born in Miami and then go back to Iran, by the way, so it's very interesting. Ali's ac academic journey led him to pursue studies in Persian literature and sociology at Alameda University in Tehran. His deep understanding of language and society has enriched his analytical skills and provided a unique perspective in his auditing role. So yeah, this man is an analytical person. Let's bring this man in who's multi-talented. Of men that you're ever going to come across. So here he is. Aurayel Ali Zepideh. 
درود علی جان آشکرام خوب هستی مرسی how are you good your hair looks great man it looks very artistic you know yes as you are that in this chapter that's fantastic thank you so much for uh, being a part of this episode uh, i know that usually you're not into this type of like spotlight and you know being on video and stuff but you're doing it for Azadi festival and that's why i love you for it you know it's like you're doing whatever you can you know um I, the other night that i was talking to you i didn't know if i want to talk on ig because i uh, i rather sing than talk so i'm not a good talker especially in english so this is one of the few time other than interviews for my job yeah. so i wanted to i saw a lot of people are doing this i'm like i have to i got this i have to overcome this obstacle so well that and that that's why i appreciate you and that's why you're inspiring other people to get out of their comfort zone may there's still a few ambassadors at other the festival that have also been a little bit shy so hopefully you open up the door for others to build up the courage to come and have this little khodomoni chat you know yes absolutely they have to they have to do this yeah and worst work. case you can tell them to have a shot of tequila it helps calm the nerves you know not about that but maybe not. um so i said that obviously you and i we go back for many many years uh i'm glad that recently we get to see each other more and and spend more time with each other especially you and your wife sarah john who's also a great ambassador to this entire program and uh i just appreciate you all as great friends and fellow hambatans who are doing everything possible to bring freedom to Iran. We're going to talk about Azadi festival and we're going to talk about your performance. But for those who don't know Ali Zepide, give a little bit of a background. You know, I mentioned that you were born in Miami, but give your journey of Miami to Tehran to then DC and a little bit about your background about Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. Well, I was born in Miami 1978 and um I was 3 months of age when my parents decided to go back in Iran. So I don't have a memory of Miami. Uh it's funny you are in my um hometown that when i was born and right now i'm in your home <laughs> that's right uh, for those people who don't know i rented uh, iman jun's uh, um, home in Ch- I, i'm loving it i'm waiting for you i just uh, cleaned up this place for you to come I'm, in and i'm coming i'm coming tomorrow to make sure you didn't mess anything up no i'm just joking <laughs> no, so yeah for that's why as is i i was only 3 months of age so uh, and revolution happened So uh, my dad apparently wanted to go to Canada because he just finished his um engineering degree in um uni- University of Florida something like that. But my mom wanted to go back. She was pretty young and uh, she misses she missed her parents and revolution um was very sensitive for her so she didn't want to leave her parents and family alone. She said no matter what we are going back. So So they ended up going back to Iran and I grew up in Iran um in Tehran and then my high school my um uh, college and university was there went two years of military for um Iran's army I had to to get my passport I had no choice to come over here so I did that by purpose because if I didn't if something happens a wedding happens god forbid I'm I'm losing somebody I had no choice I wanted to go back I did that because I wanted to get my Iranian passport and uh, I came here ever since um I've been living here in DC area and I'm blessed to be surrounded with amazing Iranian people in here um and uh yeah that's summary of my story here so uh, what what how old were you when you left Iran and you came here I was 26 year old when i came here 2004 so tell me tell me about your experience in basically i know you're born in miami but being raised in iran like how were those first first 26 years in the 90s and 2000s considering you know iran has been under this dictatorship for all these years so how would you describe the way that your life was uh, between 1 and 26 Actually life life for me was great until I was uh 24 years of age. I was just a playful boy. I just didn't care about politics. I wasn't I was raised in a traditional family. And I I wasn't really into politics because none of my family were politician or I just 
I liked literature, I liked philosophy, but I didn't, in my mind, I didn't have a spotlight on politics. But if you live in Iran after a short period of time, you have no choice that you get involved in politics if you care, as you said, if you give it up. So when I was a child, obviously I had a great life, great mom, great parents, uh, great family. And um, because my parents were traditional and religion, re religious people, I was really not looking at the Iranian government as others who didn't wear hijab or who were not necessarily practicing Islam. So for me, and I was a boy, for boys, it was kind of easier. If you're a Muslim, if you're coming from a traditional Muslim family and you're really not into um, politics, life is not too bad, especially when I, you know, at, at, my, at my time, it wasn't that bad. At least I didn't feel like it at the beginning. But when I went to 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 to, uh, to college to Alamat uh, Abu I started. So my major was literature, Persian literature, and I didn't necessarily had my critical thinking when I was studying Persian literature. One of my uh, classmates um, were offering other books from other um, thinkers, writers, like. Um, Hannah Arendt, or like, I don't know, like um, Jürgen Habermas, or um, I, I remember um, like uh, um, Karl Marx, or um, I forgot the name. Mm. So, so books that he introduced me, and I was reading about um, different countries, different cultures, it triggered in my mind that maybe I want to proceed another major um, going forward. So I ended up changing my bachelor to sociology. I went to the sociology and over there they were talking about, I, I had the concours, I had to overcome that uh, exam. And uh, long story short, one day in the sociology classroom, teacher was talking about the history of religion, how humans created language, and then how humans created religion. So that triggered my mind. I'm like, oh, okay. The religion didn't come from the sky. Humans created that. So that was it. From there, I started just asking questions, and I, I, it changed me. And then I tried to be more um, listening to the news and listening to criticism about uh, what's going on in Iran. Um, and then one of these protests that uh, you know, was happening uh, in Iran, I, I was contributing with um, other um, classmates in my university. Aloma Tabataba is famous in protesting in Tehran. So we were there, they arrested us. They, they were really, they were doing wrongdoing with girls. I was one, one day in one of the, I was in Sharik Gharb. There was a place I had to spend the night and my dad came and released me. Didn't have a bad experience like going to jail, but I never thought that, you know, they could be this cruel because I wasn't, I wasn't in that place to see it myself firsthand. Um, I got to the point, not because of that, that incident that happened to me, but I got to the point that I wanted to experience other places, especially because I had my uh, American passport because I was born here. I told my dad that, hey, here's not, it's not for me. At least I want to experience. I want to go to US and see how it is over there. And ever since um, I came here, when there was no pressure of uh, my, my parents or my, my teachers or whoever was around me to, to say, do this, pray, pray in Hamas, in Karabakun, do this, do that, um, as if that force was lifted from me, it let me, it, it let me be myself. This situation that was created for me, it let me uh, explore another version of myself. 
And I didn't, I, I, I'm not so special. I'm just a regular, normal human being. And I lived here um, like every other place, every other people who were, who were trying to make a living here. And I used to go to Iran every year. And if there was any protest, of course, when I was seeing um, anything that would happen, I w it would bring, bring my, break my heart if I would see in news they are uh, killing people like, um, um, like Aban or I don't know what's the uh, American year, 1388, Saleh Hashtag Hashtag, Green Revolution, all, all those happens. I did not necessarily go to protest. I didn't do nothing. Uh, I was just sad about it. But something happened that changed me before the Mahsa revolution. Sorry, my hair is all over the place. Before the Mahsa revolution, something really bad happened to me that it changed me. The revolution happened in me. They killed one of my classmates. They, they executed him. Um, simply because he was a, a journalist. Uh, his name is Ruhal Azam. When that happened, I wasn't the same person anymore. I, I wasn't the same person anymore. It, I just couldn't, I couldn't resist. And I'm so sad about it. And I'm so angry about it that why before that, I wasn't this serious that I am right now to, to contribute, to try to help. Really, I feel like, do I really need, did I really need for, for Iranian regime to kill one of my family members, to give a damn about this, what, what's happening in Iran? And this is a criticism that I'm having towards me. I'm not criticizing anyone, but that's exactly happened to me, and I'm so sad about it. But at least now, when I see a chance that another wave of um, protesting revolution is happening. I'm not being silenced, silenced anymore. I can't be silenced anymore. Um, and this goes to a few friends of mine that, you know, in Iran or here, they say, Ali, what happened to you? You were a peaceful guy. You were just living your normal life. Now you're just going outside, protesting, writing all these um, things about the revolution. Don't you want to go to Iran? Of course I do. I miss my parents dearly. I mean, one year I went to Iran two times for my sister's wedding and my four brother's wedding, twice in one year. I was like, yo, yo, if I go, I couldn't stay here every year. I wanted to go to Iran. But now I feel like that's the least of a sacrifice that I can do. I don't care if I don't quit to go to Iran. I wanna to go to Iran when when Iran is Azad, when Iran is free. And I appreciate what you're doing here to bring all these people together and uh, um, spread the world all, all, all over the place and um, bring this awareness that help our people to, to realize that we are not alone. We are alone in the world, but we have each other. We have to stay with each other to, to be powerful. And um, yeah. Revolution, it has to happen in you first. And people can tell if you're pretending or not. If you pretend, people will know. And you get, you get tired of it. You get tired of it. Um, in, in Farsi, what do, what do we say? I don't know. In English, what do we say? What, I don't want... What is it? I've never heard that before. Like, like as if you go on, live your life as if nothing happens. Engarna Engar. Garna Engar. I couldn't live in Garna Engar anymore. I could not. I wanted to, like, like before, um, do whatever I was doing. But, and I know this happened to all, all of these audience that I have here, all of the ambassadors, all of the contributors, you, your family, your friends, all the people that I know around me, if not more than me, I mean, if, of course, they, they feel this more than me. I'm just a small part of Iranian individual, in Iranian people that care about Iran and care about this regime who is cruel to its own people. And they don't belong to Iran. They, don't, they have to go. 
So sorry, I was just um, talking. No, it's okay. I mean, first of all, I'm so deeply sorry that you experienced such a close loss, you know, and I can understand how that created what you called a revolution in you. And sometimes I wish that everybody who's been so quiet would have the same revolution without having to experience such a loss that you did. You know, I feel like a lot of people in our community of Iranians, they need a revolution. Yeah. Uh, and, and you would think that the Masa Jina Amini death would be that reminder and get them into it. It certainly has you um, involved into this revolution and it has gotten us to now working together on the Azadi Festival. I'd like to ask you, um, what made you want to be a part of Azadi Festival? What stood out and why have you decided to spend so much of your valuable time, especially in the middle of a move? You know, you just moved into your new place just a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Um, why do you think Azadi Festival is important for our community locally and globally? Truthfully, it was you yourself. I heard about Azadi Festival before. I read about it. And um, I'm here to say at the beginning, I was a little bit, honestly, I was a little bit skeptical about the whole thing. But I'm telling this here in this live because I want people who were skeptical like me know what changed me. Uh, when I talk to you, you explain exactly why you have this uh, event. You mentioned that, look at the Jews, look at the Asians, why they have a community, why they get along with each other, why they support each other. But anytime you want to have a community, something happens. You have to stop it. We have to be strong. If you want to bring this regime down, we have to stop them. Stop them. And the celebration. Uh, in my mentality, I was thinking, if we are in the middle of the war, do we really celebrate anything? Do we dance? Do we, I mean, what it is? Not necessarily your event, in general. Then I thought to myself, after I had a conversation with you, then I thought about it. I said, look, people in Iran are dancing. And by dancing, they're kicking government's ass. They are getting rid of their hijab and the government's ass is kicked. So this is one of the kind revolution that by happiness, by celebrating, by being together, by, by just being united together, you get them mad, not even get them mad. They're so weak. They arrested a journalist. My friend was a journalist. With all the resource that they have, with all the resource, they had to go kidnap him take him to Iran and execute him. So this government, that, that tells me, this, this government that are afraid of women's hair, they're afraid of you being happy, they're afraid of journalists, they're afraid of individuals, they are so weak. If we get together, we definitely can bring them down. And another thing that I learned from you is that you said, that whatever they're doing, they want us to do, we have to do exactly opposite. They don't want us to be together, but we are going to stick together. They're saying Iranian in Iran and Iranian overseas, this is just a propaganda. We are all one. This revolution has two wings. One is Iran, the stronger one is in Iran. 85 million people are, you know, I don't know how many million, eight, nine, ten, I don't know. We are one. We are not disconnected. And if they cannot have this IG life, is if they cannot have, um, like, look at, the, uh, for example, I just want to talk about Ruhal Nazan because I love him so much. Please do. One individual who was not in Iran was bringing this government to its knees. And he wasn't in Iran. He was here. So he was using his resource. He was using his um, media outlet and he was connected he affected he he affected in a positive way in a powerful way all the Iranian in Iran and according to them he was he was considered a threat so to those who say if you are overseas you have no right to talk about how we have to handle this revolution I say I am a threat to this government and I'm here you, Iman, you're a threat to this government and you're not in Iran, you're in America. 
whoever is um, helping people to get organized, providing some strategy, Sargord Fariborz Karimizan, Behrade Tavakoli, Shahzade Raza Pahlavi, all of these people, all of these people are bringing awareness. They are providing strategy. Are we mad about? I'm, I'm not talking. I'm not going to talk about politics. It's just my genuine um, understanding, my my uh, realization about what's going on. I'm not too happy about the opposition group. But guess what? Even opposition group cannot get it together. It's almost a year. They don't have a strategy. Get people disappointed. I'm here to say, don't get disappointed. Because we have each other. We have Azadi Festival. An individual like Iman Hushman, individual like um, whoever is contributing to this uh, revolution, helping out people who are, who, as you mentioned at the beginning of this um, IG Live, to simply give a damn. They're here to, to, to fight with this government one way or another. And I believe uh, that's, that's possible if we stick together, whether, whether we're in Iran or in overseas, we can definitely bring this government down. Uh, it's been how many years since you've been in Iran? Um, the last time I was in Iran, it was 2018. I'm assuming that now because of all your involvement with what's happening, you're, it's probably unlikely that you're going to go to Iran before Iran is free, right? I mean, have you accepted that? Yeah, I did. I did. It, it was hard, but I did accept it. And, and since you accepted and you obviously will go when Iran is free, what is the first thing that you're going to do when you go to Iran and Iran is free? What do you look forward to the most? The very first thing that I would do, I would go to my home and hug my parents and kiss their hands. That's the very first thing that I would do. And I, and I know that you, each time we talk about parents and I, it reminds me about your wonderful dad. I didn't get a chance to see him, but man, he's here. I, I feel his presence. I feel his presence. And and I know he's proud of you. He is proud of you. What you're doing is exactly what he wanted you to do. Exactly what he wanted to do. That's it. I love, love you, man. I love, I love you too, man. Um, Alijan, the last question I have for you is, what does a free Iran look like to you? Free Iran is a place that people walk in the street with no fear. Free Iran is a place that people don't get shot in the eye just simply because they say, I disagree with you. Free Iran is a place that people dance, people kiss each other. In Iran, if you get sad, government loves it. If you smile government is pissed what kind of a country what kind of the people steal our country from us whatever the government wants we have to do the opposite that's what i'm saying and if we do that iran is going to be the exact opposite of whatever it is right now because of this regime nobody's going to hide their idea idea ideology point of view nobody has to hide the way they dress. Nobody has to hide their political view, their gender. They want to be, they want to be straight. They want to be homosexual. They want to, whatever they want to be, their race, their, um, their religion, their opinion, the way they dress. And free Iran is a rich country. He's, it's going to be part of um, Michael McLuhan, small, village or we call it Dehkadeh Jahani. In this 21st century, all these bright Iranian who are uh, leading the, exceptionally, they're leading some great companies in the world. They're doing great overseas. They all flood to their homeland and they will make Iran great again, like Trump says. <laughs> Yes. Fun great again. Yeah. And you look at the history.
history. Look at it. I'm tired of talking about the history. We have that history in us. We have the culture. We have the spirit. Spirit. We have. We have. We have. We have all those gold values in us. We can re re reveal them freely in Iran when that happens. I love I love your vision for a free Iran, brother. Um, just in case you're interested, and because I know that my house over there has high ceilings, so it makes for great uh, acoustics. I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no thought of, you know, everybody will hear you July 3rd. And so whether they're in person or online, they're going to hear you. But go for time. I got to do this. Yeah, bait me again. Bait me again. Yeah, if you want to kind of feel free to do it. I'm going to sing the same thing that Mr. Shajar. And let's talk about Shajar too. Like he, Ruhe Shad. Uh, he was saying to fangat razamin bokzor, but at this stage I'm saying to fangat razamin nagzor. This is a war. This is a war. We, we are, this is, there is no stop. I was looking at your IG live this morning, saying that we continue. We are not gonna stop this. We are not gonna. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna sing one of his uh, famous uh, s um, song. Oh. You guys heard about a little bit of it. Thank you. Yeah, as much as you like. Go ahead. مرغ سهر نال سر کن داغ مرا تازه تر کن زاه شرر بار این قفص را برشکن آوزی بول بول پر بست زکون جل قفص در آن نغمه آزادی نو بشر سر آن و از نفسی عرصه این خاک تیر را Thank you so much. 
you were able to sing uh, a legendary song from a legendary artist. Uh, they're going to enjoy a higher caliber quality when you perform live to enjoy it even more. The IG Live is not going to put it to justice. But when you come on stage, we're going to have sound engineers giving you the respect that your voice deserves, man. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, before I, we end this IG, I have one suggestion, if you don't sure. mind. Sure. Uh, uh, my suggestion is that now that we are getting together, um, maybe, only maybe, and maybe I'm wrong. I'm just putting it out, put it out there. Because we are talking about Iranian people, what's happening over there. We don't know exactly how they feel if they lost, if, if they lose their eye, when they get a paintball to the to the bodies, when they lose one of the uh, provider of their house because it's killed by the government. They need support, or people who close the shop simply because they want to participate in the strikes in Iran. I'm saying maybe by creating these kind of events in future maybe 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 only maybe we can contribute also financially somehow find a way to assist those people in need it's hard it's difficult i know so so has massa act massa act was difficult but those three or few girls they went all the way to the senate and they're trying to pass a legislation for massa act that was difficult too Getting OFAC, or I'm not saying necessarily you, I'm just putting it out there for whoever is hearing me, if they would agree. And, you know, I'm open to criticism. If I'm wrong, let me know. I think if we get together, look at other co communities, like Jewish people, they will help each other financially. Asian people, Iranian people can do the same thing. If, if, if it all, all it takes, I know in Europe they don't have issue with OFAC because it's, in, in United States, we have that issue because of the sanctions. They can send money. Over here, we have that obstacle. Um, I don't know what do we have, have to do to get a fact or find a way to, to cheat the Iranian government, to send money to them. They are cheating us. We, and you, you mean, is, it this, is this a war? To me, it's a war. Of course. Only it's between the governments and its own people. And what war needs? War needs people. It needs finance. It needs support. It, needs, it, is, it also needs money. It needs supply. I'm not saying tomorrow people, who, who am I to tell people to go fight in the street? I'm nobody to say that. All I'm saying is that whoever is in one way or shape, one way or shape, shape or form, in one shape or form, uh, anticipating, participating in Iran's revolution to bring this government down, if they need help and we can help, let's help them. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying by doing this, we are not helping you. Definitely we're well, helping it's, you. Uh, it's in, a, in a war, it's always multifaceted. You get, there's different, different sections to every war, you know? And this is as important as that one. Or maybe maybe more because we are lifting people's spirit and we are doing exactly what the opposite of what government yeah. wants Iranian government. we are doing just that so this is I'm, I'm all with that I, I love what you're doing here all I'm saying maybe we can add this part in future that way um, if if somebody you know chat with me in Instagram that oh I I mean I try to help myself a little bit here and there but I'm only one person. Uh, I'm just putting it out there, and I know a few people that they, if if uh, you know they're they're injured in Iran, they need they need, they need uh, money because they lost their parents or brother or whoever is provider. Um, they're right now they're helping them, but as a community, if we expand this, if we um, if we have a strategy for this, we can help more and we have a better effect to help. Uh, Iranian people to win this war. I definitely agree. I think um, th there's definitely got to be a group that's dedicated to that. We're trying to specialize in this part of it, but you're 100% correct that we need to figure out how to raise funds that goes directly to the people that need it the most inside of Iran. So no argument there. 
I'm just trying to focus on the things that we specialize in and that's the that's events and entertainment. And hopefully there's some people that specialize in that component. I understand. So that uh, we can definitely grow that part. Every, every element of a war needs support constantly. You know? Absolutely. And I just use your Teribun or use your- Yeah, of course, that, of course. Other, if people can hear me, that's needed too. Absolutely, my friend. Khulasa, I appreciate you. I cannot wait to see you perform live on July 3rd. Definitely make sure that you perform that Shajarian song. Uh, make that one of the songs that you perform. And uh, I look forward to going back to Iran and hugging your parents with you and thanking them for bringing a great friend and brother into my life. So appreciate you very much. Omida Azadi. Omida Azadi. Damn it. Yeah. Oda Hafiz. So ladies and gentlemen, that was Ali Azadi, one of our ambassadors of Azadi Festival, as well as one of the performers. Uh, and we cannot wait to have him uh, grace the Azadi Festival stage. For more information on Azadi Festival, click the link in my bio, go to azadi-festival.com. Don't forget, there are six ways that you can support this program. You can become an ambassador, you can become an ally, you can become a sponsor, you can become a vendor. You can uh, purchase uh, items from the uh, online merch store. Uh, you can make financial contribution. This program needs as much financial firepower as possible so we can put on the best program that we can. But above all, just be there. Make sure you be there in person. You go buy tickets via the link uh, in bio. Or if you can't be there in person, make sure you join via the live stream. There's no reason why you can't be a part of this program in some capacity. That's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow I go to DC and we get ready for the home stretch.